right, so here I've got the file open from chapter three, folder five, content aware fills. And I have this large panoramic shot of the art center complex at Orange Coast College. And the complex is so wide that I had to back up way across this part of the campus and actually photograph this in four different shots. So I took one over here, then one of this section, then one of this section, and one on the right, and I blended them together into a panoramic scene. Now a telltale sign of a panoramic image is this bent edge across the top, and typically you get it across the bottom as well because of the distortion of the length of distance. Obviously this length way over here is a little bit longer than pointing the camera straight ahead. So you do get this bent distortion. So in order for you to see things more clearly, I added this little black layer, visibility help layer. So it's just a little easier to see the missing parts. Okay, so what I wanna do is fill in the missing parts. So I'm gonna start on the top layer, the actual photograph itself, and I've got all this missing space. So when you have missing space, a big blank space, you're gonna to go to your magic wand tool. And all I'm gonna do is click right in that missing space because I'm on the top layer. Now, what you have to keep in mind is the fact that Photoshop has semi-transparent pixels right along the edges of a photo. They're called anti-alias pixels. And to prove that, I'm gonna take my zoom tool click and drag to the right and zoom way in here like this. You can see those semi-transparent pixels. They're not really blue, they're not really black. It's where they're fading along the edge of the sky. And I do not want my selection to stop right at the edge of those pixels. I want my selection to go into the blue sky. So in order to expand my selection, since I have an active selection on the screen made with my magic wand, I'm gonna to go to Select Menu, Modify, and Expand my selection. Now I'm gonna expand it by 10 pixels. I want it to jump way down into the sky. So when I click OK, now my selection has gone way down to here, 10 pixels in. Okay, if I wanna zoom out, I can click and drag to the left, to zoom out a bit and there's my image on the screen and the beautiful part of this the easy part in Photoshop is to fill in the missing space I'm gonna let Photoshop do that for me so on my keyboard I'm gonna hit shift key and the big delete key I believe on a PC that would be shift and backspace and what that does shift and delete on my Mac is it brings up the fill dialog box here and what I want to fill this missing area with is not the foreground that's black not the background that would be white I don't want to pick a random color I want to use content aware okay and what that's gonna tell Photoshop to do is be aware of all the values right along the edges of this selection which is all these different shades of blues and grays and whites. And it's going to randomly replace all this missing area with what it thinks should be the blues and the grays and the whites. Okay, so I want 100%. Do not preserve the transparency. Leave that unchecked. I want color adaption turned on and I simply click OK. Now I just wait for Photoshop to do its calculations and it'll do its analysis of those pixel values here. And there we go. Command D to deselect, and it completely filled my sky for me, which looks great. Pretty darn seamless, it's beautiful. Okay, I'm also missing the concrete down below, so I'm gonna do the same thing. Take my magic wand, click on the missing area of the concrete and again that's going to stop right on the edge of those semi-transparent pixels so i want to expand my selection again select menu modify 
and expand it by at least 10 pixels. I want to make sure I jump past those semi-transparent anti-alias pixels. So I'm going to click OK. And I'm going to do the same thing. Just Shift key and the big Delete key on my Mac. This remembers the last setting that I used. So I just have to click OK. Let Photoshop do, again, it's all its calculations here. And the other thing that I would recommend after I hit Command D is to zoom in and check the details. These features are good, but they're not perfect. Okay, you can see right here, I am missing part of the sidewalk, the little gap. So I'm going to zoom in on the right, hold my space bar and push this up with my hand tool. And you can see this gap just magically just disappeared here. Photoshop did a pretty good job, but it didn't do a perfect job. So I need to fill that in. And if I hold my space bar and kind of scroll across, it took some of these weeds and put them right in the middle of the cement, which doesn't make sense. If I scroll across, here's some weird average marks that don't look like they belong. And there's another gap that just magically stopped. Okay, so I'm going to come back to this big gap and show you how to fix what Photoshop couldn't replace completely. And that's going to be with my clone stamp. Okay, when I come out here, I want to hold Control and Option. I want my brush to be a little bit bigger. Not too big, because then you're going to end up hitting other areas of your photo. So maybe around there. I'll go about 65 pixels right there. And all I have to do is hold my Option key, Alt key on a PC. I'm going to get my little target and I'm going to put it right in the middle of this gap. Option and click. Now I let go of my mouse and the keyboard. And now when I move, I get a preview. So I'm going to line up that preview at the end of this gap, click and drag, and create a little bit more right there. Okay, here's a telltale sign that this is fake. You can see this little dark spot was repeated exactly the same down here. That's because I was cloning and I went past it and I recreated it down here. So you don't want your photos to look that fake. You want to look for those things. If objects are really distinct or unique and they repeat themselves again, that's kind of a sign that you've been doing photo retouching. So I'm just going to come up here, option click right up here. Now I'll move down right over that weird gap or that stain and just paint it out a little bit. So we only see one stain right there. I can hold my space bar and push this over and I don't like all this junk. So I'm just going to option click clean cement above move my cursor down and paint option click move and paint option click move and paint so I can get rid of all that stuff in the cement right there I got that gap looking good option click above paint down below option click on the left paint over on the right option click above paint down below and you get the idea you just kind of jump around. Option click over here, paint way over there. So it's kind of hard to tell where pixels have been mixed together. Okay, again, you don't want to see the same pixels over and over and over again. So I can option click, let's say over here, paint out that little gap right there. Option click right here, line up the gap and paint a little bit more. And it's not quite long enough, so I'll just back up and do a little bit more. Option click above, paint down below. And let's zoom out. And now I've got all the sidewalk with its gap. All the cement is looking good. The whole photo is looking good. It's a nice, solid, rectangular shot. No more missing parts of the sky. And the only other thing I would recommend is since you have an outdoor shot like this, you don't have control over the lighting effects or the weather, which affects the lighting conditions. 
So what I always recommend is just to punch things up just a little bit by going to Image Menu, Adjustments, Hue and Saturation. Okay, this bar right here says master. Master means every color in this photo. I don't want to just adjust every single color. I'm concerned about the lawn. And here's a tip. Most plants that you see in a Photoshop file are actually made up of more yellow pixels than they are made up of green pixels. So I can click this bar target the yellows in the grass and I can saturate them. You can see it getting brighter and brighter until it looks all irradiated and fake. But you can see right there, I'm affecting the yellows in the grassy area. So I might bring them out a little bit more, make it look like we've been really taking care of the lawn. Then I can highlight the greens and punch them up. Notice you barely see a difference not as dramatic as the yellow so I see it more in the dark spots okay we'll go into the cyans the light blues which would affect the sky colors up in there and that looks pretty good to me I love that photo this one is done you can save it as a JPEG and uh, turn it into me if you're in my class you can do whatever you want but now we have a full banner shot of this art department that's by using content aware fill.